YouTube, Josh here from the J-Side Friday. I'm standing next to the heater because it's super freaking cold. It's western New York. Uh, we got a big storm coming. So, uh, yeah, kind of kind of lame. But I got out in the garage this week to work on the four-wheeler so we could plow snow. So, anyway. Uh... What are we gonna start with this week? What are we on? We're on season two, episode three of the J Side Friday. And guess what? Three weeks in a row. That's pretty good, right? Anyway. So this week we're gonna do a little uh You know what? We're gonna pause from this uh this chitter chatter and we're gonna play our game. What's in the box? But it's not in the box. Because today, I got mail, and it was in an envelope. A very tightly taped envelope. From a place called Trail This in uh, Wisconsin. And uh, I already opened the box to make sure I knew what was in it. And it's one of these things. Now, if you're a cyclist, you probably recognize the SRAM GX line as being their new cure-all, save-all um, component group to get rid of the X9, X7, X8 whole line and just replace it with a more uniform, fancy shifter derailleur combo. If you're not a cyclist, just fast forward for a second and this will be kind of quick. But what I got today is one of these guys. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes on your bike and it goes clicky clicky and it shifts. Um, we take them for granted, but um, I ride a lot and I can tell you, I can, I can feel the difference between something that works and doesn't work. And something that doesn't work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a rant out there, you ready? So, I currently ride in the winter you see how wide that is? That's a fat bike. Uh, that's like a 4.6 tire on a 26 inch wheel. It's called a fat bike. Um, his name is Homer J, as in Simpson, and uh, we ride trails together. He's, he's one of my besties in the winter. Um, but throughout our time together, there's been a lot of upgrades. Um, most recently, probably can't tell, but that's a Sunrace uh, 42 tooth rear cassette on a 10 speed. Um, it just gives me the range that I need to climb big things. Unfortunately, with a brand new chain and a brand new cassette, this thing shifts pretty crappy. And I've pretty much come to the conclusion that I'm done playing with this, this shifter that's on there. And if that's so you know, that's an XO derailleur short cage. Um, this thing's got a SRAM grip shift. Uh, it's an XO grip shift. Very nice, very expensive. Uh, feels good on your hand, except it wrecks your hands because it's not ergo gripped. Shifts really poorly. So. I'm gonna swap that out and go back to triggers and uh, I'm gonna love life because it's gonna shift again and me and Homer J are gonna look for every steep hill we can climb and get traction on with our big fat tires. And that's it. That's what's in the box. Flashback tech on my air compressor. Yeah. Now, this thing, you can probably see it over there. Uh, this is an oilless Craftsman uh, upright air compressor. And uh, I have to say, I got a really good deal on it like 10 years ago. Sorry, my butt's getting warm. And uh, really not impressed. The thing is really noisy. 
Uh, it does pump up to 150 PSI, but it empties out quick. So, not a big fan. It worked great up until uh, a couple weeks ago when uh, this happened. Yeah, so basically if you tear one of those things apart, what's inside of there is just a small electric motor and a essentially the air compressor part. It's a rod and a crank and a piston and half of a cylinder. There's no lubrication on the bearings or the cylinder itself. Um, as you can see in the pictures, that thing's just kind of hanging out in there, which is really not cool. By not cool, mostly because as that thing cranks for a while, all it's getting is dirt and dust from your garage. It just goes right up into the crank. So, weird, right? Whatever. Way to go, air, or, uh, oil-less craftsman. Can you see that? <laughs> There's actually, I can see my breath. Anyway, so one day I was using it, I was working on this thing. Yeah, doing a favor for somebody, doing a brake job, and they apparently just ignored the squealing and squeaking and then wore through the backing pad of their brake and through part of the piston until it pitched the piston sideways into the caliper and then puked fluid everywhere and at that point the car stopped stopping so i'm working on that and uh, the compressor's running away and i got four tires off with the impact and I'm, I'm working on the last wheel and the impact decides to just not crank and the compressor is sounding weird at this point so i walk over to the compressor and it's not shutting off and it was putting out about i don't know 10 psi it was not happy and uh, I decided it was blown up and we were done. So I used hand tools. Finished up the brake job, got the car out of here. Back to this thing. Um, as you can see there, uh, that belt was roached. Uh, belt was super cheap. I think it was like 15 bucks on Amazon, $16 on Amazon. Showed up in two days. Um, all you need is a really long set of Torx bits, which I bought at Harbor Freight um, for like 15 bucks or something like that. And then a little creative screwdrivering to pry the belt back on because you really, they didn't make it easy to swap. But it went back together. Put it back together, the thing runs great. So now the compressor has another 10 years to serve me in the cold, dusty garage. Um, and that's that tech that I just never posted because I was busy. Uh, this week, I've been working on the four-wheeler, that guy, with the plow so we can push snow. And the exhaust was a nightmare. So it was completely rotted out. At one point, it stopped flowing through the muffler and it was coming out of this little I'm assuming it was designed to catch uh, moisture but I'm starting to think now it was like a flame arrester of some sort and what it was basically this little guy hung off the bottom of the exhaust and the pipe went across the top see the big hole and there's like nothing in there can't see it but it's hollow somebody tried to use epoxy to hold it together and it didn't work so it was using this little mid pipe catcher I'm gonna call it a baffle whatever they use them on intake sometimes but um it was using that as a muffler and it was super loud and annoying and leaking everywhere and I decided I'm gonna fix it so I dug around and I've got another uh, parts three-wheeler in the basement and it had an exhaust on it but when I took it off it was broken too so that was useless my thought was to take this thing and put it on that thing nope so then I found another exhaust and that didn't work so I decided to take all these pieces and start doing that start cutting man you know, we made the exhaust for the Maverick and I've done exhaust on other, other stuff, but I never thought to do it on the four-wheeler, so I did it. 
Um, took a little bit of creativity and a couple minutes of welding, and it's all butted up. Now, you've watched the pictures. Um, I'm just going to skip over to the actual unit. Now, I will say it looks like a Chinese uh, muffler, like one of them little Chinese four-wheelers, um, like an Eton or something, but I made it myself. It cost like 30 bucks, I think. I bought the muffler from Tractor Supply and it was off of a Ford tractor and it was the smallest diameter pipe I could find. Um, and it's like a corrugated pipe going through that's baffled, like a motorcycle baffle. They, they drill the holes and they kick it out like fish scales. But in the middle there's a plate to stop the airflow and it goes around it essentially to quiet it down. So. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Super solid. Um, at the end, I just took a piece of steel, some flat stock, which I cut on the top and rounded it off. Um, heated it up, bent it around the pipe. Did a little wrap on the bottom of it and then just uh, welded it in a few spots and the thing is super solid. Um, I started it up and there is no exhaust leaks. So the next step which I don't have to do is to come up with some sort of baffle that goes in the end of this. Um, my thought is something just essentially to kick the exhaust down so you're not blasting somebody behind you and it at the same time should quiet it a little bit. So today the goal is after I'm done filming this because we're going to get snow. I got to bolt the body back on and uh, do some fine tuning and tack weld a heat shield on it. And maybe I'll come up with a baffle if I don't go to pizza dinner with the dudes. Um, but that's tech of the week, that's it. We're done, okay. How many minutes are we at? We're almost, we're, we're getting there. We're at like almost 10 minutes here. So, what do we got left? We got news, you want? Once again, I'm not inspired by much I've seen on the interwebs. Um, I did see some random footage of a brand new mid-engine Corvette on a track and uh, I can't show the video because one, I don't know how to steal videos yet, probably download it I guess, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to show you the picture. You're going to have to look it up. Look up, you know, 2020 Corvette in Germany or something, I don't know. It looks kind of neat. I'm not a Corvette guy, but it looks pretty sporty. So good for them. Way to enter the, the new world of automobilia. He's got his ball. He's ready to go outside and play. Um, and that's it. That's all I got. Um, until next week, uh, take some inspiration. Get out in the garage. Do something. Uh, work on your lawnmower or something. I don't I don't know. Just do it. Yeah. That's our motto of the week. Just do it. Till next time. J Side Friday. Adios.